Hey you guys, so today I, uh, I had an interesting, interesting topic. Well, I mean, I guess you decide if it's interesting or not. <laughs> I was just thinking recently about how many of my like holy grail products have changed, um, kind of in the last couple of months even. So I, I thought it would be interesting to talk about that. I feel like every once in a while I try a product and I'm like, oh, Perfect, I never have to try anything else again because there will never be anything better than this. And I noticed as I was pulling things that a lot of the stuff that are my holy grail products are things that like, I hate repurchasing. I love buying lipsticks. I love buying like eyeshadow palettes, all that kind of crap. I love trying out new ones. I think it's like a blast, but there's things like brow products and concealers that like, I just want what works. I don't want to have to like mess around and try new things. And I'm always so wary to try out new products like that. So it's like kind of just like my, my little happy home. I'm nestled into my, my products, my holy grails, but uh, there's a lot of things here that I just realized I had changed out recently. So let's jump into it. Perhaps the most boring and annoying thing to buy in makeup is eye primers. If you guys have been here with me for a while, you'll know MAC Paint Bot was my only one. I didn't, it was like there was no need to try anything else because I was like, yeah, but MAC Paint Pot. I always used Soft Ochre from MAC uh, for like years and years and years and years and years, like literally since I started doing makeup until maybe like, I don't know, a, a year ago or something, uh, which is when I started using the Urban Decay Primer Potion. This was a product that was like a holy grail for everyone for the longest time. And it was something that I just never really bothered to pick up because I knew that Paint Pot was like the one for me. But here's what happened. It's a tragic story. So take a seat if you need to. I experienced something kind of recently I got old. It happened to me and it could happen to you too. I don't know what to say. I just started noticing that the paint pot started to feel and look really, really heavy on my lid. It started kind of adding to the texture of my lid and I just thought that it just looked too thick and too cakey and it was kind of messing up the way that my eyeshadow looked. So I started kind of, you know, shopping around for different things and this was the first thing that came to mind because I was like, well, it's what everyone uses. Now, they used to only have one shade in this and it was like super pink. So this is in the shade Fix. It's a lot more of like a yellow toned. It's kind of a similar shade to Soft Ochre. Um, and I really, really, really prefer this one. Just so you guys know, because I also used um, a Urban Decay Primer Potion recently that was white and everyone was like, I don't know, they had a white. They have all kinds of colors of the Primer Potion. They have like a pink based one, which is the original one. They have a shimmery one. They have this one, which is more yellow. They have some deeper toned ones as well. Uh, and then the white one as well. So MAC Paint Pot was moved aside for the Urban Decay Primer Potion and I haven't really looked back. This is another thing I hate buying and that's mascara. CoverGirl Clump Crusher was the only constant in my life for years. I've been using CoverGirl Clump Crusher in waterproof on my bottom lashes since, mm, uh, birth, yeah, birth. And then for years and years, I was using Tarte's Lights Camera Lashes on my top lashes. So I'd always use Lights Camera Lashes, top lashes, clump crusher on the bottom. I love the way that this Tarte one makes my eyelashes look. I just felt like it separated so beautifully. The brush was like big, but not so big that it was overwhelming. Like it was just a perfect mascara to me. Same thing with the CoverGirl Clump Crusher. I felt like it separated my bottom lashes really nicely. It didn't deposit too much product because I don't like super clumpy bottom lashes. I uh, just like a little bit down there. And this is like my duo this was like my little tag team i feel like the older i get these weird makeup issues literally appear overnight like i never used to have an issue with anything settling into my fine lines and then just one day something settled into my fine lines and it was never the same so what started happening with my mascaras is i started having tons of transfer on my concealer and a lot of you guys know i don't set my concealers and a lot of people were like well it's because you don't set your concealers but i never did. I never set my concealers and I was always using the exact same mascaras and it didn't seem to matter like what concealers I was switching between. It always seemed to be transferring. So I kind of started, I kind of started dabbling because I'll be completely honest, even when I would get mascara in the mail, like in PR, I would just put it in the donations bin immediately because I was like, well, it's not going to happen. It's just not. Me and me and them for life. So I wasn't even really trying new mascaras. Then I started getting transferred. So I was like, all right. I got the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara in the mail. And I was like, goddamn. The way this makes my lashes look is truly unparalleled. It's like, it's unlike any other mascara I've ever tried in my life. Like this mascara to me, 
there's, there's no mascara out there that makes my lashes look better than this one does. For the first little bit that I was using this, I was having no issues with any kind of transfer or anything like that. But then again, overnight, randomly, I started getting transfer and I was like, God damn. But I'm still keeping this one with me because I love the way it makes my lashes look, so it's there. I got invited to go to an hourglass event down in LA. I realize this is like a really long winded story to get to the chase of like a mascara. Bear with me. I got invited to this hourglass event and I had just seen um, like a couple days before uh, some sneak peeks of the scattered light eyeshadows, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And I was like, oh shit, like I'm so fucking excited for this event. Those eyeshadows look insane. I can't wait, blah, blah, blah. I had seen an employee wearing these eyeshadows at some point and I was like, ooh, that looks like a new launch. I'm not gonna ask her about it. And then when they, when I saw the sneak peek, I was like, that's probably that fucking eyeshadow. Anyways, so I was like, oh yeah, it's about this eyeshadow. Can't wait to go to this event. Then Hourglass sends an email to my managers and they're like, oh, like if Samantha wants a sneak peek, here you go. Just like make sure she doesn't tell anyone what the launch is. And I'm like, oh shit, oh, I can't wait to see. I was so excited. I like click on the freaking link and it opens up and it's this mascara. And I was like, the event is about a mascara, okay. I was super disappointed. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, I really wanted it to be all those eyeshadows. I was so excited. I was like, I can't wait to get my hands on them. And then it happened to be an event for this mascara. So I go down to LA, um, I get into the hotel room and the mascara is waiting for me. And there's a thing, there's like a little um, card that they put in my room that said, it said like 94% saw thicker lashes and then 100% saw zero smudging. And I was like, hmm, that's a fucking lie. <laughs> that's a lie. So I tried out this mascara immediately as soon as I got down to LA. My first impression of it was that it, I don't love the way that it makes my eyelashes look. It's not that it makes them look bad, it's just that it doesn't make them look like milk does. But the long story short is, I, this it actually doesn't smudge. So this mascara, this is the Caution Mascara, I don't think I've even said the name. It replaced not only my Tarte Mascara, which I use on the top lashes, I don't even wanna say this, It replaced Clump Crusher. I'm not being dramatic when I say that like, I actually didn't think I would ever stop using Clump Crusher. Like I was just waiting for the day that CoverGirl was gonna be like, oh, Clump Crusher is now discontinued. And then I would be like, I don't know what the fuck to do. Like I probably would have bought out the remaining stock. So since I started using this mascara, I haven't used Kush, but I love it. I love how it looks. I really, really do. Um, I haven't used Kush. I haven't used Tarte. I haven't used CoverGirl. I've just been using this one. Um, so, pff, fuck. I don't know what to say, man. It happened. It happened to me. Moving on to brows. This was another product that I was like, no way in hell. Like, I'll just never even have to try anything else because this is my favorite. Uh, Benny, Benny, Benny. Benefit. Benefit Gimme Brow. Um, this is a tinted brow gel. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about it a million times. It has a little, little bitty brush and basically every single day when I do my brows, I put through a tinted brow gel first and then I fill in the rest of my brows if I need to. If I'm going kind of like a no makeup makeup day, I'll just put this through my brows and that's it. And I've gone through, fuck, countless Gimme Brows. Like, I, I don't even, I, I couldn't even begin to, to come up with a number of how many of these I've gone through and how many times I've repurchased this. I was so hooked on it. I got my mom hooked on it. Like, honestly, this is just, it's, it was like my, my only brow gel. I never tried anything else. Same thing when new things came in the mail, I was like, man, fuck it, don't need to try it. But when I was doing my Glossier review, I ordered Boy Brow in brown and I don't know, it's like sometimes you have to admit defeat, but I'm not ready to. First, I need to dispel a rumor. I've heard a ton of people say, anytime I mention boy brow, everyone's like, oh, apparently ColourPop is like a perfect dupe for it and it's way cheaper. ColourPop only has a clear brow gel. I'm talking about the tinted brow gel. So let's, it's not about you right now, ColourPop. Take a seat, everyone relax. Now, upon first glance, these are almost identical products. Here's why Glossier Boy Brow defeated Benefit Gimme Brow. Benefit Gimme Brow stays really soft and flexible. I find that it doesn't hold my hairs in place. It kind of just coats them with a tint and that's it. So whenever I was doing my eyebrows with this, I would put this through my eyebrows. I would fill the rest of my eyebrows in with whatever, powder, dip brow, 
whatever I was using. And then I would have to go through with an additional clear brow gel to hold my brows in place. Boy brow, I just put this through. And first of all, I feel like it thickens my eyebrows in a way that Benefit Gimme Brow doesn't. I feel like Gimme Brow kind of is more of a tint and this one actually makes my eyebrow hairs appear fuller. So a lot of the times I just wear this with nothing else through my brows if I'm having like a lighter makeup day or whatever. But the Glossier one also sets my brows in place. So I don't find that I'm having to go back in with a clear brow gel because this actually just holds them where they are. So I've already gone through two of these. The one thing I will say about the boy brow is that it does seem to dry out a little bit faster than the uh, gimme brow. And I think there's similar amounts in here. This has 3.12 grams and this actually has 3.0, but I find that I end up running through the Glossier Boy Brow a lot quicker. It might be because it's a thicker formula, but it also seems to dry out a lot faster than the uh, Gimme Brow does, but uh, it's quite a bit cheaper as well, so it's still really, really worthwhile to me. So um, Boy Brow, it's my new holy grail. Sticking with brows for a second, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Anastasia Dip Brow. This, ugh, okay, here's, here's my long-winded story for this product. When I worked at MAC, they came out with essentially dip brow. They only came out with like a few select amount of colors and it was a limited edition launch. And I was like, but why? It was a product to me that was like so perfect because I was running through, what was it, Fling? I think it was Fling eyebrow pencil. I was running through that like fucking crazy. And the thing that annoyed me was that I was eating through so much product using this brow pencil. So when this kind of like dip brow Mac version came out, I was like, this is the best it's the best. Like I was like, why are they not making this permanent? And I ran through my brow product from MAC and I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do now. Q Anastasia launching dip brow. Right when this launched, Anastasia was like commenting back and forth on my Instagram and she was like, oh, I wished you lived in LA so we could work together. And I fucking booked a flight to LA. <laughs> I went down to LA and I was emailing uh, Norvina and she was like, oh, um, I, I said, can I meet with Anastasia? Because you know, she left this comment and I'm gonna be, I happen to be in LA. I wasn't happening to be there. I, I planned it because I wanted to meet her. And I was like, I happen to be in LA. Like, is there any way I could meet with Anastasia? And she was like, yeah, like you guys can do lunch on this day, blah, blah, blah. And then she emailed me kind of last minute and she was like, oh, like, would you like to come to a private dinner at Anastasia's house instead? And I was like, mm -hmm think about it. Uh, give me the address. I'll be there. <laughs> so we went to this dinner. I was with a friend of mine at the time and uh, we went to this dinner and we didn't really get much time to like talk with Anastasia because there was a bunch of other people there as well. At the end, I said to Norvina, I was like, oh, I wish we had gotten more of a chance to talk to you guys. And she was like, well, come by the office tomorrow. I went into the office and I was sitting down and chatting with Norvina and stuff like that. And then she was like, oh, my mom's coming. Don't worry. Anastasia rolls in like a flightless angel. And she was like, let me show you how to use dip brow in her thick Romanian accent. And then she called over an employee and she was like, everyone's been using this and they use it so dramatic. And like, that wasn't even what it was for, blah, blah, blah. And then she showed me how she used dip brow and I was blown away. I actually shed a tear <laughs> because I just remember my first day of makeup school, they talked about Anastasia and I, and that she was like the queen of brows and stuff like that. And it just felt so bizarre to be sitting there like watching her do brows right in front of my face. But the way that she used dip brow is like with the lightest, most unbelievably small amount of product ever. She would dip her brush in like a super, super fine, little, little thin brush. She would dip the brush in just barely. And then she would wipe basically all of the product off on the back of her hand. And then she went through and did these super, super light hair like strokes all through the brow. And then she took her spoolie and brushed off almost all of the product. And what we were left with was like the most incredible, natural, full looking brow. It was just the most bizarre thing ever. And dip brow became my all time favorite brow product after that because instead of using it like a liner almost for the brows, I started using it how she had showed me to use it. And I was like, this is the best fucking product in the world. My makeup style over the past probably year has changed quite a bit. And I, I never thought I would be somebody that would kind of opt for a more natural look because I just didn't like how that makeup looked on me. But here we are today. So while I love the dip brow and I think that you can create the most beautiful natural looking brows ever. I've been opting more and more for things that are a little bit less finicky that take a little bit less time. And I've started using the 
Brow Powder from Anastasia. So the shade I use is medium brown, and I love this shade in particular because I find that um, even if I'm transitioning between being like a little bit of a darker blonde, a little bit of a lighter blonde, I can still use this one powder. So on my days where I'm not wearing as much makeup or I don't want as intense of a brow, I only use that lighter shade. And then on the days that I want a little bit more intensity, I'll either mix the two or I will use uh, just the dark one or whatever, kind of create an ombre effect using the two shades. I pulled out this nice, beautiful one for you to look at, but I actually use this like decrepit, disgusting brow pro palette. <laughs> so yeah, I just feel like the brow powder is a little bit quicker. It's a little bit softer looking um, and it's just really kind of like easy and foolproof. And that's why I've opted for this more often as opposed to the dip brow, which I'll, I'll realistically always love. And I always use it for my beauty mark either way. Um, but I have really, really been liking the appearance of the brow powder, so it's been, it's been a holy grail for me. Moving on to concealers. I was gonna add foundations, and then I was like, fuck, my favorite foundation changes every like three weeks, so. I don't know that I would say, no, yeah, I would. Tarte Shape Tape was a holy grail for a lot of people. Um, I don't know that I thought it was like the best concealer I'd ever tried because the best concealer I've ever tried was the original formula of the Tom Ford concealer, which they changed. It was devastating, whatever. We're over it. It's fine. We're, we've moved past it. We've moved, we've moved past it. It's, it's, it's fine. Tom Ford. Fucking kill you in your sleep. <clears throat> but Tarte Shape Tape was a, a concealer that I reached for probably the most often out of anything else in my collection. And as I said, my makeup style kind of has changed and you know, I've been opting for more lighter coverage foundations. I've been liking a lot dewier foundations. Um, and I just started to find that the Tarte Shape Tape started to look so, so full coverage that it looked odd when paired with my lighter coverage foundation. It was just like too much coverage and so opaque and none of my true skin showing through. Too Faced Born This Way Sculpting Concealer came out. This came out super recently. I said this in the first video where I talked about this, but I think if you didn't like Shape Tape or Shape Tape wasn't what you were expecting it to be, I would really recommend trying the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer because basically the way that everyone describes Shape Tape as being is exactly what this is. And I also find that like, I'm able to wear this with full coverage foundations, I'm able to wear it with light coverage foundations, and it doesn't seem to look too out of place. So since I've got this, I mean, I've tried other concealers here and there that I've received in PR, but for the most part, I've just been using this, uh, and I, I love it, I love this concealer, I think it's fantastic. Last year, I was in a really committed, long-term relationship with Nude Sticks Bondi Bay. I went through probably four of these. I loved this product. I honestly thought it was the best thing I'd ever tried in my life. And to be honest, this formula to me is still, yeah, I'm gonna go there. It's still unmatched. It blends out beautifully. It stays so unbelievably well on the face. Like I find that pretty much no matter what I put on in terms of like face makeup, whether it's like foundation, bronzer, highlight, blush, whatever, I find that I'm having to kind of touch it up throughout the day. And a lot of that is in part to the fact that like I don't set anything on my face because I prefer being able to kind of quickly go over and like stipple with my beauty blender uh, when my face isn't set versus like when I set my makeup and it starts to come off, it looks really like patchy and dry and flaky. So I, I'm fine with the lack of longevity based on the fact that I feel like my skin looks better and is actually easier to touch up than when I powder it. But this, like, it stuck through anything, honestly. Like, I would put it on in the morning, I could wear it until, like, I could wear it through the entire day, I could be sweating, I could be doing activities, like, didn't matter. At the end of the day, it was still kind of in place and it was just really, I was just really surprised by the staying power of it, but it didn't look like dry ever or anything like that. So this formula to me is still phenomenal and I really, really want them to expand um, specifically into like more kind of contour shades. Nude sticks, hit me up, let me know what's going on. I don't know. But I just started to feel like this shade was really quite red toned on me at some point. And it was weird because I, I've been having issues similar to this with the Chanel bronzer recently. I picked up the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel Bronze Universal. It's not universal, I'll just say that. It's it's this one shade, it, it works for, for me and me only. There's some days where I put this on and I'm like, best bronzer color I've ever seen. Unmatchable, it's perfect. If there's nothing wrong with this, this is fantastic. And there's other days that I put this on and it looks straight up fucking like swamp monster green on my face. 
I don't know what to say. I'm gonna keep using it and hope for the days that I look beautiful and the days that I look like a swamp monster, I'm gonna be like, at least it's fucking Chanel. That's what kind of started happening to me with this bronzer because when I look at this bronzer here, I actually don't even mind this color, but I found that there was days that I would put it on and it looked so red. So because of that, I just kind of started dabbling in other cream bronzers and I have, I have two, I have two. First being the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand in fair medium. And I, oh, that color, oh, it's so perfect. Like it's, it actually is the perfect bronzer color. It's like never fail, it's so beautiful. The only thing about this product is that the, the packaging is so fucking disgusting. I'm never gonna not mention it. I'm never going to let it go, okay? So I'm gonna keep talking about this product and I'm gonna keep talking about how shitty the packaging is. The packaging is the worst, but it's a beautiful formula. It's a beautiful color. And it's something that has kind of started to replace Bondi Bay for me a little bit. And then the other one is the Hourglass uh, Illume Sheer Trio, which you guys have heard me talking about a ton recently. That's that shade there. And honestly, it's kind of a similar tone, but it's a little bit more neutral and it's also a little bit lighter than Bondi Bay is. And this has also recently become one of my absolute holy grails. I love, I love, the formula of this. I feel like it wears super well. It blends out beautifully. And as I've mentioned before, when I use this, I use all three products. I don't just use one or the other kind of thing, which a lot of the times for me, when I get like dual sets or, you know, trios like this, I'll use one thing and I'll just use it to the very bottom. And then the other things get no use. I find that every time I use this, I end up using every single product that's in there. And I, I love all of them. This next one, you guys are literally going to want to skin me alive for because I've pretty much shoved this product down your throat and been like, I don't care if you think it's too expensive, just buy it. And you guys have been like, okay. okay. Everyone's like foregoing their rent payment for the month and just being like, fine. Oh, I'm so sorry. Tom Ford Naked Bronze. Hold, relax, okay, hold on. Hear me out right now. Let's, let's, let's talk about this. Okay, this will never actually be replaced for me. This product is phenomenal. It's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. I, I love it. I always will love it. I'll continue to use it. Remember in the beginning when I was talking about how I was so disappointed that the Hourglass event was about a mascara that I ended up really loving because I thought it was gonna be about those eyeshadows. Those eyeshadows, magnifique. These oh, have a really similar appearance to the Tom Ford one. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm so sorry. And they're half the price. I don't know. G oh. This still does no justice to this. It's the most incredible, beautiful, reflective, textured. Oh my Lord, it's so good. But it's a little bit time consuming and it's $70. So now we move into these hourglass ones. These are just an eyeshadow on its own. And I'll sh swatch some of these guys right beside the other one for you. Starting from this side, this is the Tom Ford Naked Bronze. Then we have Stone, or no, sorry, Smoke. I always get that wrong. So this one here is Smoke. Then this one here is Reflect and Blaze. Those are my three favorite shades out of the Hourglass Scattered Light eyeshadows. They have a really, really similar appearance to that Tom Ford. They're almost kind of exact, if not a little bit more textured and glittery. So it's kind of nice because it's half the price. You don't have to use the cream and there's a few other colors as well that are a little bit more neutral. So if you love the Tom Ford one, I know that you'll love the Hourglass Scattered Light. It's a fucking beautiful formula. They look so gorgeous on the eyes. So that is everything for me today, you guys. Those are my holy grail products that have been replaced. Sometimes moving on isn't a bad thing. Sometimes it's a good thing. Most times it's a good thing. All the time it's a good thing. Whether it's your brow gel or your deadbeat boyfriend. Sometimes we just gotta move on. You know? Anyways, you guys, that is everything for me. Let me know if you guys have any holy grails that have recently been replaced. I would love to hear it. I wanna try your favorite products. Let me know in the comments below. I will get back to you. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Oh yeah, I'm reminding you. Everything I mentioned today will be in the description box below, linked for your convenience. All right guys, peace out.